Alright guys, this is Mr. Tardis, and welcome to Mr. Tardis Reviews. And now, finally, it's my review for Bad Wolf. I've not been able to get around to this one for a while because, you know, university, work, life, and all that other sort of stuff. But to be honest, this is a review that I really haven't been looking forward to. Now, don't get me wrong, I really like Bad Wolf, I think it's a great episode, but its significance is mainly important because of, well, the episode that takes place after it, The Parting of the Ways. And I'd rather much skip to that one, because that one's far more interesting to talk about. That's where all the awesome stuff takes place. But I need to do this properly, so finally, Bad Wolf. There's going to be no distractions, no more delays. I'm finally going to review Doctor Who Series 1, Episode 12, Bad Wolf. Nothing's going to stop me, interrupt me, and right on cue. One moment. Hello? Oh, no, no, I'm just, um, just recording. It's the review for Bad Wolf. People have been waiting for it, so I guess it was... Hmm? A takeover of the five Who fans? Well, okay, well, don't know what they've done wrong, but okay, best of luck with that. You want me to be a part of it? I can't do that. Well, because they have production values. I, I can't do anything like that, it's... Okay then, add another two zeros to that check and you've got yourself a deal. Excellent. Right then, um, change of plans now to talk about something far more important than Bad Wolf. Let's talk about Martha Jones. Now, my taste in Doctor Who is pretty awkward, especially when compared to popular opinion. There are some stories that people seem to absolutely love, but I think are an absolute waste of time and space. There are some stories that I really like, but are hugely polarising, and I think Rose Tyler is one of the worst companions in the history of the show, if not the worst. However, one of my favourite companions is Martha Jones, played by Freema Adjaman which um, is kind of a, a minority opinion because not many people seem to like her for reasons that consistently baffle me. So today I'm going to take a look at the other side of the spectrum. Here are my top three reasons why I love Martha Jones. Number three, Cross Appeal. Martha Jones is one of the few companions in the history of the show, other than Captain Jack, Sarah Jane and K-9, to have a wider influence in the universe of Doctor Who. Yes, she was the main character in Season 3 in 2007, but she came back in Series 4 twice. And not just for stupid, pointless cameos, but for actual stories. She also appeared in the second series of Torchwood, as well as some Torchwood audio dramas, such as Torchwood Lost Souls. While admittedly she didn't have a fantastic presence in any of those stories, it at least goes to show that the audience and the writers are willing to see and write more of her in this universe. Also, of course, with all the other previous companions, she went to say goodbye to the 10th Doctor, David Tennant, during the End of Time Part 2, where for some reason she's married to Mickey Smith. Why? Seriously, why? She had a fiancé at the middle of Series 4, Thomas Milligan. We never saw Martha and Mickey interact with each other at all in Series 4. I mean, did they exchange any words to each other? What do they have in common? Why would they both get together? Because they're black. Point number two, she grew as a character. Okay, it's no secret that Martha Jones was in love with the Doctor. And I don't have a problem with that in the context of the series at all, because it was an unrequited love. Doc the Doctor didn't love Martha like Martha loved him. And honestly, considering her home life, the way she was treated at work, her friends, her family, I'm not entirely surprised that she ended up falling in love with somebody with an amazing time-travelling blue box. And also, David Tennant. David Tennant. But she never let that get to her. She was never always one-dimensional and always inhuman in the way that she approached the stories or, or what she currently needed to do. Sort of like um, how she reacted to the Doctor transforming into a human in human nature. How when he's writhing in pain, she's got her mouth over her hand. She, she's absolutely shocked and she can't bear to watch this happening. But she has to. It just shows that she is a strong person. But at the end of the day, she is still a person and she still has limits. And despite falling in love with the Doctor in Series 3, she learns that this isn't good for her or the people closest to her. 
I love her final moments in series three where she talks to the doctor and she explains why she has to get out. She decides what's best for them both and decides to do the smart thing. Although, having said that, there was one aspect I hated in the love story, and that was the line in Human Nature, where she said, you had to go fall in love with a human and it wasn't me. That's not a Martha Jones line. That is so massively out of character for her. That's not a Martha Jones line. That's that's a Rose Tyler line. And point number one, she actually worked for her reputation. Actually go back and watch series one and two of Doctor Who. What did Rose Tyler actually do? She was rarely responsible for saving the day. She was bitchy and horrible to pretty much every supporting character, including her family. And she didn't evolve or change throughout the entire series. Okay, okay, let's scratch that. She she started out as a bitch with no ambition to a bitch who felt she was massively entitled. In fact, when Rose Tyler encountered previous companions of the Doctor, do you remember how she acted? I mean, those previous companions were people who were great companions, who had had a profound effect on the Doctor Who universe, and were simply just really good people. She treated them like dirt. Do you remember her first reaction to Sarah Jane? Oh, he's never mentioned you. Where are you from? The Dark Ages. And what about the way she reacted to Martha? Shut up, I was here first. Russell T. Davis clearly loved Rose, and that came across in the writing, like in the long game when the Doctor said, I only take the best, I've got Rose. That's not something the Doctor thinks, that's something Russell T. Davis, the writer, thinks. And to be honest, even though he's the writer, it is completely untrue. Martha got no such love when she first joined the TARDIS crew. For example, there's the scene in Shakespeare Code when the Doctor and Martha are laying in bed and the Doctor's thinking, oh, Rose would know what to do. She wouldn't because she was as dumb as a brick. But, you know, once again, that's the writer talking, not the character. I felt it was really, really unfair to Martha. When there's change in the series, you have to help the audience embrace it. You want the audience to make the companion feel welcome in the show, not compare them to the other one's bitchy shadow. But Martha was such a great character that she didn't really need love from the writers. Rose Tyler just sort of fell into the Doctor's life one day. The Doctor actively chose Martha to be a part of the crew because she impressed him with her brains, for example, figuring out um, his assimilation plan in Smith and Jones, and also figuring out that the windows weren't airtight, which is why they hadn't run out of oxygen instantly. Her compassion, like when she closed the eyes of Stoker in the office when he was dead, And of course, her bravery. Rose Tyler just ran into situations without any thought. For example, in the long game, when the Doctor said you should go back, Rose says, tough. That's not being brave. That's just impulse. Bravery stems from doing something even though you're afraid, which is what Martha Jones did when she had to encounter the Jadoon to stall them to let the Doctor do his plan. Would Rose Tyler have been able to figure out the Doctor's assimilation plan in Smith & Jones? No. Would Rose Tyler have been able to figure out to turn off all the lights in the vehicle in gridlock in order to keep the macro at bay? No, for God's sake. She would have cocked up all of human nature because the Doctor left Martha responsible while he was human to keep him safe. Rose Tyler would have cocked up that job. Rose Tyler was given the power of a god to end Series 1. Martha Jones walked the Earth on her own as a mere mortal. That's a million times more impressive in my estimation. We were told that Rose Tyler was an amazing person. Throughout the course of Series 3, Martha Jones actually proved it. Hello? Hi there. Who are you? I'm Mel. Good love. So this is a dream? This is a dream. This is clearly a dream, obviously. It's not a dream, then. Okay, maybe not. Okay, right. Wait a sec. I know. I've got a bone to pick with you.